First thing that I want to tell you is that uh, I don't want you to believe anything that I say, nor to trust me. The human design system is an empirical system. It's something that proves itself. Anybody who's ever worked with it knows that. So it's something for you to wait and see. I'm going to take you through a great deal of information. Before I do that, on the 3rd of January 1987 until the 11th of January 1987 on the island of Ibiza in the Mediterranean, I was penetrated by a voice. I was given all of this information, so I'm a messenger in this case, and I'm just here to share with you the knowledge that was given to me, and this knowledge is the human design system. In order to take you to a point where you can understand how individual design affects each and every one of you, I've got to take you through a lot of information. Basically, what I'm here to explain to you and share with you is the duality of the universe and the fact that the duality of the universe is also the duality that is in all of us. According to the physicists, sometime about 15 billion years ago, there was an event that they call the Big Bang. That is, uh, there was a moment 15 billion years ago when all the material of the universe, all the mass of the universe, all of it, stars, trees, birds and bees, you and me, was all compressed into an object the size of my fist. At the moment that that object was ignited, an enormous amount of material spread out into the expanding universe. And this material, as it spread out into the expanding universe, was divided into two groups of things. The first side that we're going to look at is the yin side. The scientists call them quarks, and there's six of them. Up, down, strange, charm, beauty, and truth. Nice names that the scientists gave to them. The reality is that they have discovered and proven five of them. The sixth one they just have evidence for. We discovered within the last month that there is evidence that truth exists. The reality is that these six quarks, as the universe expanded outwards, the, the universe began to cool from the intense heat of the beginning. And as it began to cool, these six quarks came together in two groups of three. We call these neutron and proton. And the neutron and the proton are at the center of everything that we call atomic in nature, which means what we are and uh, this building and our planet and everything on it and all the stars and all the galaxies. All of that material is atomic in nature. The other side that was created at the beginning, they're called leptons. They thought for a long time that this was just pure energy. And these leptons were also divided into six parts. And the three electrons and the three different types of neutrinos. And as the universe began expanding outwards and as the universe began to cool, what happened was that this neutron and proton came together with the electron and they formed the atom. Now, everything that we can think of is atomic in nature. Everything that we can think of is atomic in nature. Everything that we think of that has mass, that has shape, that has form, everything in the entire universe is atomic in nature. There's a joke, though, and there's always a joke. The joke is that if you add up all the material of all the stars and all the galaxies and all the trees and all the birds and bees, you only end up with 10%, you only end up with 10 of the mass of the universe, 10% of the material, one ten. There's an enormous, enormous amount of material that is not atomic in nature. I'm here really to talk to you about neutrinos. My joke is that I'm a neutrino salesman because the reality is that the neutrino is one of the most incredible things. Neutrinos are only made in stars. They're really the breath of stars. They're the byproduct of stars. There are so many neutrinos, it's hard to imagine. There's three trillion, that's three million million neutrinos pass through everything, everywhere, all the time, at near the speed of light. Now, try to imagine that. You've got three million million of these particles and they go through everything, everywhere, all the time at near the speed of light. And what makes the neutrino absolutely extraordinary is that they discovered in the 80s that the neutrino bears an infinitesimal mass. This is very important. It's not pure energy. It's information. And that information is penetrating through all of us all the time. And it is programming us, as you will see. The second part of our story is more mystical. 
In my experience with what I call voice, I was told that the whole universe is a living entity, that the whole universe is an unborn fetus, that it's still within the womb, that it does not know what made it, that it has not come out into the world yet. And in the information that I was given by the voice, what I was told about was the crystals of consciousness. According to what the voice told me, in the beginning, when we had all the material of the universe compressed into a single object, something banged into it. That is, the beginning of the universe was a conception, a moment of conception. And inside the yang si, and inside the yin egg, were two crystals. Now, I call them crystals because that's what I was told. That is, uh, I've never seen them. But the term crystal is important because it gives you an idea about how they work. So imagine for a moment that you have these two crystals, one in the seed, one in the egg, that bang into each other. They expand out into the universe. What happens is that those crystals inside, they shatter. They shatter into so many different facets, so many different pieces, it's beyond our ability to imagine it because the crystals of consciousness are in everything. Every bird, every bee, every plant, every tree, every human being, every animal bears crystals of consciousness. These crystals of consciousness are within us. Here in the Ajna Center, what they call the third eye, here is the design crystal. This comes from the original yin. This comes from the egg. And the design crystal manifests our biogenetic vehicle. That is, the design crystal builds these bodies, directs these bodies in their development, in their growth, what you look like, Really, what you've inherited as a genetic information is all lodged within the design crystal that sits here. In the head center, in the crown head chakra at the top of the head, is the personality crystal. This comes from the original seed. This comes from the original yang. And this personality crystal manifests who you think you are. Your personality. Or more likely, who you think you think you, think you are. <coughs> And here, in the G-center, in the sternum, here is the magnetic monopole. The magnetic monopole is the thing that holds us together. It gives us literally our sense of separateness, the illusion of our separateness. It also pulls everything else towards us. You could call it love. But the magnetic monopole is like the arm that goes up from a streetcar. That is, it hooks you into your geometry. It is a monopole. It only attracts, it hooks you into your geometry and rides you along in your life. It is your driver here. If I could give you an analogy. Imagine for a moment that we have a limousine. Nice, lovely car, let's call it a Jaguar. I have a nice car, nice interior, leather seats, all kinds of goodies inside. That's the design crystal. That's the body. Just the body. And it could be a nice body, it could be not, but it's just the body. And then, then you have the driver here. The magnetic monopole. The magnetic monopole knows exactly where it's going. It's the chauffeur of the car. It knows the road, it knows the machine, it knows where it has to go. Nobody has to tell it anything. It knows exactly where it has to go. And then there's the personality crystal that sits up here in the crown head chakra. That personality crystal that thinks it thinks. This personality crystal, this is the passenger in the back seat of the car. It's not the car. Who you think you are? It's not the car. It's not the driver. It's the passenger in the back seat. And you know what a good passenger is supposed to do, huh? You look out the windows and watch the world go by. The human design system is a synthesis, like the television set. Nobody knows who invented the television set. It's just made up of all different kinds of things that suddenly came together in a synthesis that had enormous impact on the world. The reality is that the human design system is a synthesis, and it's a synthesis of knowledge that is both ancient and modern. It belongs to the, the whole planet because it comes from all the major cultures of the planet. And when you look at this particular mandala, because this represents the various components of the human design system, this synthesis then comes alive. But before I talk to you about the components here, 
I want you to imagine something for a moment. Many years ago, somebody asked me what I thought about astrology, and I said, well, prove it to me. There was nobody around that was going to prove that to me. And the reality is that all these years later, I end up in this situation in which I teach something that is based on astrological information, so I'm going to have to prove it to you. So let me do that, and let me give you a proof for astrology. First of all, I told you about the neutrinos, and the neutrinos are only made in stars. Our sun, by the way, is a star, and our sun produces nearly 70% of the neutrinos that we receive. The reality is that all around this wheel, we have an enormous star field everywhere, and all that star field is doing is it's streaming information towards us, neutrino information, traveling at near the speed of light at a density that's far beyond our ability to understand. All of that information streaming through and when it's streaming through, imagine that it's all around the outside of this circle. It has to come through here. I told you about these crystals that are inside of us. Imagine what it's like. Imagine I have two crystals in my hands. Well, let's call them diamonds. And they're cut differently. That is, they have different facets, different shapes to them. And I take these two crystals and I put the same, exactly the same source of light through these two crystals. Because they're cut differently. What comes out is different. That's us. That's all of us. All of us have a slightly different cut to the crystals that are within us. And as we receive the same information, and we're all receiving the same information, we translate that information uniquely. Imagine what happens when the planet Mars gets in the way. And you've got this stream of information pouring through, and the planet Mars gets in the way. I tell you, if you've got a red car and you've got a white car and they bang into each other, you're going to get a little white paint on the red car. And you're going to get a little red paint on the white car. And that's called communication. And when you have this stream of information going through Mars, it's going to have an interaction with Mars. It's going to be changed by Mars and it's going to come through your crystals and it's going to leave off that information. This wheel, the outside of this wheel, you can see there's all these numbers going around the outside of this wheel. There are 64 of these numbers. They're from the I Ching, the Book of Changes, ancient Chinese wisdom. Really a miracle when you think about it. The Chinese, thousands and thousands of years ago, knew that the basic configuration for what it is to be human was the 64 times 6. That is, the Chinese understood that there were 64 basic themes. Those are the themes that are going around this wheel. And out of those 64 themes, there are six sub-themes. In 1958, when they discovered the human genetic code, Lo and behold, they found the same story. That is, they found 64 codons of six groups of amino acids each. It's exactly the same mathematics. The human design system is a way to understand your genetics in a way that is available to everyone because it is a logic system. You do not have to be a mystic. You do not have to be spiritual. You simply have to be able to follow the logic of things. The reality is that all of these gates going around the outside, they're oriented to the zodiacal wheel. They're oriented to the zodiacal wheel because it's through the wheel of the zodiac, the astrological wheel, that the calculations are made for the design system. And any time that you make a calculation, if you place a planet here in the middle of Vita, in the middle of Aries, the reality is that it's going to be in this 21st gate, 21st hexagram, rather than just being in Aries. In other words, this information is much more precise. There are more groups involved. There's more exact information. And this information here, this 21, this 21 has a place here inside of the body graph. One of the unusual features about the design system is that the moment that you take the calculations of the planets, not only can you find out specifically where they are in terms of this genetic matrix I Ching matrix around the outside, but you can place that information directly into the body. And as you'll see, it makes an enormous difference in the capacity to be able to understand not only our own nature, but to be able to understand our relationship with the universe itself, with other people in our lives. Basically, the human design system is about recognizing that we all are integrated with other people all the time and to see what kind of effect they have on us, what kind of effect they have on our conditioning. Here, within the body graph, there are nine energy centers. These energy centers are based in the Hindu Brahman chakra tradition. And between these centers are channels. These channels are from the Zohar, from the Kabbalah. 
and they connect these energy centers together. And you can see, for example, that here at the top, the 64, and here at the bottom, the 47, these numbers, they represent the gates, the opening of these channels. And if you had a planet in 64, which is over here, or in 47 over here, that would open up this channel. In other words, where everything is placed in the wheel gives you immediate access to be able to place that information inside of the body. This is an individual ray of calculation chart. And this individual ray of calculation chart, you can see that it has a very unusual feature because this chart is made up of two wheels and it has a body graph in the center. And these two wheels are very important. That is, this wheel over here represents a calculation that will tell you the nature of your design crystal. And this wheel over here will tell you the nature of your personality crystal, that is the basic information, the database. And then this database gets integrated here into the center, into the body graph. But before I can tell you that, or I'll tell you about that, I have to tell you the strangest thing I tell you tonight. That is the conception sequence, how life begins, how life comes into the world. You know, one of the things that, that I teach and one of the things that I share with people is that the moment that you recognize that this is an empirical system is the moment that you will discover that you really do not have any choice and life is like that. Children come into the world when they come into the world. These crystals of consciousness, they're not always in bodies. There are so many of them, many more than one can imagine that are outside of bodies than in, and if you could really see the picture of this planet, you would see that this planet is nothing but a shimmering field of them. There are trillions and trillions and trillions of these crystals out of manifestation. The personality crystals that sit in the crown of chakra, who we think we think we are, these personality crystals of consciousness, when they're not in manifestation, when they're not in a body, they are in the atmosphere of the earth. They're always moving around, passing through. Sometimes they come together in large bundles. And when the information, the neutrino stream passes through those bundles, people think they're talking to the Virgin Mary, or God, or Seth, or Zeus, or whatever it is that's common, UFOs, depending on the tradition. The crystals of the design that create the forms, when they're not in manifestation, they're within the mantle of the earth. And when they're in the mantle of the earth and when they're outside of a form embedded into the design crystal, there's a magnetic monopole. Remember the magnetic monopole is a driver. At the moment that there's going to be a conception, the magnetic monopole of the male puts out a frequency. And in putting out that frequency, a design crystal and its magnetic monopole comes up from the mantle of the earth, follows that frequency line, comes into the male body, into the solar plex center. This is the emotional center. It's going to move along this channel. As you will see, this channel here, the 59, the 6, this is the channel of reproduction. This is a channel of producing children. At the moment of orgasm, it is the design crystal with its magnetic monopole, with its driver that's in exactly the sperm that does not break into the egg. The egg opens up for it. And the moment it starts, the moment that that seed is there within the egg, all there is there is the seed and the egg and the design crystal. And that design crystal takes the neutrino stream, it pours through the mother and it pours through that design crystal and that design crystal starts building the biogenetic vehicle. It starts building the body of the fetus. It starts building the body of the child. If it's going to be a normal pregnancy, if it's going to be a pregnancy that is a nine-month term, and I will talk about the others in a moment, it's going to be a normal pregnancy for approximately the first six months. The only thing, the only thing in that fetus is its design crystal building its body. It does not have a personality crystal. In the language of Christianity, there's no soul in the body. You know, we live in an age in which there is an enormous discussion about the nature of abortion and whether it is correct or not correct to take a life before it comes into the world. As far as I know, as far as this knowledge knows, you know, there is no personality, there is no soul in the fetus if it's going to be a normal pregnancy, pregnancy until the sixth month. At that moment, at that point, the personality is called into the fetus by the fetus monopole, pulls it in, pulls in its own soul, pulls in its personality, 
And then for approximately 88 or 89 days, that personality has a chance to hook into the body, and then there's birth. These two wheels are calculations that are made at the end of a process, and it begins with the birth calculation that is here. This is like a normal astrological calculation at the time of birth, the place of birth, and this calculation over here, this gives you the calculation for the personality that is for the personality at the moment of birth. Because at the, at the moment of birth, the personality is ready to deal with the world. I was told in my experience with the voice that 88 degrees of the sun before birth, it's between 88 and 89 days depending on the sun cycle, 88 degrees of the sun before birth, the personality enters the body. If you go back 88 degrees from the birth time, you come to the exact time and the exact point that the soul enters the body. And that's the moment when the body is ready for its personality. That's the moment that the neocortex of the brain is ready to take in the personality, to allow the personality to begin to function. So we have here two sets of calculations. A birth calculation that gives us the data of the personality, and we have a prenatal calculation that gives us our genetic information that tells you the nature of the body before the personality came in so we know what the personality is going to live inside. Remember the personality is a passenger and it's the passenger inside of this design vehicle. Now you can see in these wheels, I take an example here in this design wheel, the design, the prenatal is always coated red. The personality, what you have access to, is always coated black. I've trained a lot of psychiatrists and psychologists, a lot of therapists, because through this side, through the design side, what's read, you can always see the unconscious at work, because everything from this wheel operates unconsciously within us. In this calculation, once the astrological calculation is made, here's a case where, for example, the planet Uranus in Gemini, it's in a position that places it in the 35th gate and if you move over here, you can see the 35 here, and you can see that this channel is colored in halfway. That is, that the moment that a gate is activated, one of these positions, then automatically the channel is open from that gate, but not all the way, only partially. All this information over here then gets translated along with the Earth. And the Earth is always opposite the Sun. The Earth is where we get our grounding. It's where we get our stability. It's a very important access. So here, on this side, you have the design information, and then you come over to this side and you have the personality calculation. Again, all this information gets translated. Here, for example, is Uranus and the node. They're in 45. Here's the 45 colored in, in black. So when you're looking at this chart, when you're looking at the body graph, you get to see the two sets of information the unconscious genetic information that you inherited from your mother and father and your grandparents going all the way back in your genetic pool. And it's also the information that operates at an unconscious level. And you can always see that unconscious because it's the red in the chart. On this side over here, the birth calculation, this is the potential of the personality. And this potential of the personality, where you have access, is colored in in black. Inside, here, is where you get to see the individual human life. It's not the separate pieces of information. It's how these sets of information integrate together into a body graph. Before I take you into an individual chart, in the back here on our table here, there is a box set, a black box set. And in this uh, box set, there are two books. One of them is called The Human Design System. And it gives you an introduction to the design system. It also includes an I Ching so that you can do the analysis of, any, of anyone's chart. In that the human design system, there is also an index. And in this index, what this allows you to do is that it allows you to look for any single astrological position. And out of those astrological positions, you can know exactly what hexagram, what gate, and exactly what sub-theme that particular planet, that particular object activates. One of the advantages of design is that you get very, very exact information. You simply have to read it. It gives you a deep detail of that information. So this index gives you an idea that you can go through the entire zodiac and for every single one of these positions in the zodiac, 
there is a corresponding hexagram and line which will give you the exact information. So now we can get to individual design. This is an individual rave analysis chart. This is the kind of chart that's used to do individual analysis. And you can see that these two wheels are no longer here. We have two sets of information now. We have the design information, and it's given in hexagrams and lines. So, for example, this Jupiter, the design Jupiter, the unconscious Jupiter, is in the tenth hexagram in the first line. There are always six sub-themes. And you can also see, for example, that on the conscious side, the personality Jupiter is in the 58th hexagram, fourth line. This 10 over here, here's the 10 over here, and you can see it's black and red because there's a 10 coming from the other side. It's a direct coding system, and in this particular chart, you just get the basic information in hexagrams and lines. If you look at the top, this is uh, the founder of modern India, if you look on the right-hand side, it gives the birth time. If you look on the left-hand side, which is an earlier calculation, this gives you the moment that his personality crystal entered into a body. That is, when you have an individual rave chart, you have both your birth time and you have your design time. That is, you have the time that your soul entered the body. These two sets of information then get translated here into the body graph. And the body graph is very special because when you see the information coded in, certain things happen. The first thing that happens is if you look here, you can see that there's a gate open at the top, the 43, that's the sun on the right-hand side here, the personality sun, and you can see that the earth opens up the 23 at the other end, and this whole channel is colored in, and these centers are colored in. This is called definition. Think of this as a circuit board. Whatever circuitry is running, whatever circuitry is always moving, drawn in this way, this is what can be trusted. It's there 24 hours a day. It's there all the time. It's always there. It's the only thing that a human being can trust. When you look at this drawing over here, you can see that this isn't colored in, and this isn't colored in, and this isn't colored in. This is the heart center. This is the ego and the willpower. This is the emotional center, the solar plex center. Here at the bottom, this is the root center, our adrenaline center, our kundalini center. They're not colored in. They're not connected. This human being is always going to live out what he's not. Human beings never live what they are. They never live their definition. They only live their conditioning. And these centers that are not colored in, these are the centerings where our conditioning takes place. Take the example here of the solar plex center. This is the emotional center. And you can see that this emotional center isn't colored in. But there's a possibility over here to connect it. And there's a possibility over here to connect it, and over here. And the moment that that emotional center is connected, whether by another person or by a planet, that emotional system is opened up, and the emotions burst out. And this person doesn't know why. I'm like this person. I have an undefined emotional system. So I went through 35 or 36 years of emotional chaos, because I'm a very rational being. And all of a sudden, somebody would come along and they would just hook me up. Boom! Out pours the emotions. And people would say, oh, he's so emotional. But you know, it wasn't me. I was being conditioned by other people, connecting up those emotions. You know, I've sat with over 3,000 people now, professionally. I sit down beside them. Every once in a while, I have people come and sit down beside me. They're so emotional. And they put those defined emotional systems right into my body. And I can get butterflies in my stomach and I can get knots and I can feel very, very uncomfortable. Nothing you can do about energy. But you know, I know it's them and it's not me. And I used to think it was always me. And the reality is that every single one of these centers, they are not empty, they are not broken, they do not need to be fixed. Understand that. They're just open. What's defined is fixed and can be trusted. But here, what is opened, this is where we get conditioned. And all of us have been conditioned. Think about this human being as a baby. Comes into the world, they take him out of his mama, they put him on top of his mother. He's in her aura. I will show you what auras do to human beings. In her aura. And the moment he's in her aura, perhaps she connects these emotions. Stabilizes them gives him the same emotional connection 
the same emotional connection for his first 15 or 16 or 17 years. And then he leaves home. And the moment he leaves home, that conditioning is broken. The aura is broken. He doesn't have that energy anymore. First woman he meets that hooks up that emotional system, that's going to be the one that he says, aha, she makes me feel like who I am. And of course it was never who he was. Never. If you have somebody who has an undefined ego, they're always looking for their courage. They're always looking for their willpower. If they have an undefined emotion, they're always trying to find their emotional stability. If they have an undefined root center, they're always looking for this deep adrenaline kundalini power. And they forget about the rest because they think something's missing. We all like that. None of you, none of you have ever lived your life. You live your conditioning. You cannot eliminate conditioning. But you can condition the conditioning. You can be wise enough to be clear about who is good for you and who is not. And that's really the work of the design system. It's all about the stars. If I step into your aura, I penetrate you as deeply as if you were my lover. You pass a stranger in the street, they penetrate you that deeply. Live in an apartment building, get into your bed at night and you've got a wall beside you, and on the other side of that wall is somebody else sleeping in their bed, in their apartment, they're in your aura. I'm going to condition you. Human beings are living in aura boxes constantly surrounded by other auras, not being able to recognize what is them and what is not them. This is the inspiration center. This is the head center. This is where inspiration comes through. Here's somebody who's open to inspiration. But the inspiration will always be conditioned by the outside. It's not this person's inspiration. It's inspiration that will come through. He has a defined Ajna center. This is where we conceptualize and this area of conceptualization is connected here to the throat center, which is the most complex. Anything that connects to the throat speaks. So here's somebody that can always speak. Always. Always. Always speak. If you have somebody who doesn't have that connection to the throat, if their throat looks like this heart center, they cannot speak. Those are the kind of people who want to speak as much as they possibly can. But they can't. They have to wait. They have to wait for the right people. They have to wait for the right energy. So here's somebody that can always speak. The mind is connected to the throat. The mind speaks. Here the instincts are connected to the throat. The instinct speaks. The sexuality is connected to the throat. The sexuality speaks. This throat center, this center of manifestation, it's more than just verbal. When the throat center is connected to one of the body's four motors, then the throat center becomes our center for action. This is somebody who is a doer. The four motors, the heart center, this is the motor of willpower. The emotional center, emotional power, the root center, the kundalini, the adrenaline motor, and here the sacral center, the sexuality, this sacral center is connected through the self, where the monopole is, that holds us together, our driver, that gives us our direction. And then in a continuous movement, it connects to the throat. This is somebody that can always do. There's two kinds of people. There's people who can do, and people who have to wait to do. That's the nature of the world. Those that are doers always do too much. Those who are not doers always want to do too much. It's just the way it is. It's one of the jokes in life. Right? This is the higher self, the G center. This higher self is made up of two great crosses in the zodiac that point the corners of our seasons and the interregnums in between. It's the microcosm of the whole universe within us. It is love in a sense. It's what holds us together. And this is the higher self. This is the higher self that knows what direction to take. Remember, it's the driver. It knows where it's going. So if you have somebody that doesn't have a defined G-center, they do not know who they are, they will never know who they are, and they suffer from this <coughs> mythology that everybody is supposed to know their one self. Not everybody can. The reality is some people can, some people can't. 
This is somebody that can always know themselves because this self always has an access here to the throne. It can always speak. It can always do. It can always express itself. This center over here, this is the splenic center. This is the body's immunity system. This is our protection from disease. It's our protection from bad vibrations. It cleans us out. Our center of well-being. This is somebody that can make other people feel good. He brings the power of this cleansing system into their life. If he didn't have this, he wouldn't feel good at all. Anybody who comes into a session and they have an undefined splenic system and I say to them, you do not feel good about yourself and they nod their head. What to do? By the way, any time that you have a center that's undefined, the human design system has no morality. There is no good chart. There is no bad chart. There is no better chart. There is no worse chart. These are just games. There's nothing to do with that. Everybody has their own design. Everybody has their own thing that they have to deal with in this life. These centers here, these are where we go to school. I have an undefined emotional system. When you step into my aura, I know exactly what you feel emotionally. Exactly. Because whatever I feel emotionally when I'm with you, it's not me. That's not my business. So I just take it in. And now I don't let people into my aura that make me uncomfortable emotionally. I can feel it a mile away. The moment they just step in. These are windows. These are windows to protect you because wherever you have a lack of definition, all your life you've been conditioned there. The moment that you recognize that it's not you, the moment you stop identifying with that energy and saying, what's wrong with me? Instead of looking around you and saying, what's wrong with them? I do not teach people to love their neighbor. This is a very tough business. <laughs> I tell them to love themselves. In order to love yourself, you have to accept yourself for what you are. There is no magic potion. There is no guru. There is no mantra. There is nothing ever going to change the nature of what you are. It's fixed until you leave this plane. And unless you accept your own nature, not only will you never love yourself, you will never really find love. Most human beings, what they call love, is simply being conditioned by somebody else. Whether it's a positive conditioning or a negative conditioning. The reality here is that when you're looking at this design, what you can also understand is that if you take somebody else's design and you match this to this, you're going to see right away where things connect. These potentials. This channel here. This outside channel is the channel of talent. There's an enormous amount of information locked in here. There's a channel of talent. This 16th gate at the top, it has a double opening. It's coming from both sides. You can see it's from both the Plutos here. This 16 is the ancient Chinese hexagram of enthusiasm. It's a hexagram of music and dance and the arts. It's very creative. It's the gate of skills. And this gate of skills in this channel of talent, it isn't connected to the other end. This other end, the 48th gate, this is the gate of depth. This is where the instinct and the intuition builds its quality. So think about it. You have a little boy. He's got this 16th gate. And he's going out of school. And as he's going out of school, he hears a piano. And just as he hears that piano, the planet Pluto comes along and opens up the other end, the 48th gate. Pluto can stay in the gate three years. That's a very long time in a human life. So all of a sudden he hears the piano, and in that moment that he hears the piano, Pluto opens up the whole channel, and the whole channel of talent is opened up, and suddenly he feels very good because it's connected to his well-being, and suddenly his skills have the depth that he needs, the taste that he needs, and he goes inside and he says to the teacher, I'd like to play the piano. He goes home, he tells his mother, he says, you know, I, I want to play the piano. And she said, well, pianos are expensive. She said, well, 
well, you go take lessons. Ask the teacher if you can have some lessons. He goes back. He takes the lessons. He gets very, very good. Very good. After about a year, the teacher calls up the mother and says, you know, you should really get him a piano because he's very good and he's going to be terrific. And so they decide, okay, let's get him a piano. They get him a piano. And he plays. Another two years, it's better and better. And then one morning he wakes up and Pluto leaves the 48th gate. And it's over. It's all over. Oh, it doesn't mean that he won't play the piano again in his life. Every once in a while, if the right planet comes by, if he's awake, if it's during the time that he has a chance, maybe later in his life he meets somebody who has the other side and he rediscovers his talent for music. But what he thought was him is over and think about what that does to your psyche because you do not know why. Evil is just ignorance. The greatest evil in the world is what people do to themselves and it's just out of ignorance. What's he going to do with that? How is he going to explain that to himself? What happened to my talent? I don't want to play anymore. And what is his parents going to say? You should be practicing. It's gone. And all he's going to feel, all he's going to feel is guilt and shame and blame. He's just going to have to carry a heavy weight for nothing and it wasn't his fault. Life isn't anybody's fault. Life is just what happens. Here's another kind of example. If you look here, you know, I often have this situation with people that sit down and they see these empty, what they call empty centers, and they get very upset. You mean I don't have anything there? It's not true. Remember, they're not empty, they're not broken, they don't need to be fixed. Here's somebody who's very, very open on the mental plane. In a human being, there are three areas of awareness. There's the mental field of awareness. This is the mind. Most of us are stuck there, whether we should be or not. That is, if it's not defined, you can't trust it. She cannot trust her mind. She can be conditioned all her life mentally. Every time she's got an idea, every time she's got an opinion, every time she has an insight, it's got to come from somebody else because it's not there in her. By the way, that's very similar to Carl Gustav Jung. If you take a look at all the people that have an open mental system like this and you go into their house, they've got lots of books, tapes, magazines, all kinds of stuff everywhere. They're just trying to fill up that space. Here, this is the oldest awareness system that we have. This is the splenic awareness system. This is our body consciousness. And this body consciousness is very different from the mind in that it only operates in the now. If you have this defined, colored in like her father does, you can be spontaneous. You can be existential because this is an existential awareness. It's a now awareness. You go up to a door. You have an appointment. This screams at you, no. And then the mind comes in and says, yes, but we have an appointment when well, you really should be there. And the emotions come in, the vulnerability of the emotions come in, and she says, oh no, if I don't go in there, they're going to be upset with me and I'm going to be uncomfortable. And this splenic awareness, this now awareness, does not come back a second time and say, hey look, I just told you no. It doesn't do that. You miss it, you miss it. Think about it. If somebody has a defined splenic awareness and they don't pay attention to their intuition, their instinct, they're never going to be able to guide their life properly. Never. The third awareness system is the most complex. It's the emotional awareness system in the solar plex center. Because it's not just an awareness. It's a motor. Unlike the other two awareness systems and the confusion that exists in this planet, the violence that exists in this planet, the energy that exists in this planet, is simply because people cannot control this emotional energy. These three areas of awareness have three different frequencies. The mental frequency works over all time. You can think about a problem yesterday, today, tomorrow. The splenic awareness only operates in the now, right here, right now, in the moment. And the frequency of the emotions is a wave. It either starts high, it goes down low, 
comes back up. Or it starts low, it builds up and falls back down. So when you're really excited emotionally, don't make any decisions. That's not the awareness, that's the energy. And when you're deeply depressed, don't make any decisions, because that's not the awareness, it's the energy. People who have an emotionally defined self, these people who have emotional definition in the solar plex center, they control the whole environment. If you have a defined emotional system and you walk into a room and you're in a bad mood, everybody's going to be in a bad mood. And if you walk in and you're in a good mood, everybody's going to be in a good mood. It's the way that it works. You can see that in the case of Indira Gandhi, that these three areas of awareness, along with the ego, they're not defined, they're open. This is somebody that could never trust her awareness. She can only trust her doing. She didn't know that. She didn't know that at all. If you're somebody like her, you've been living out somebody's ideas. Whenever you're spontaneous, it's because of somebody else. Whenever you're emotional, it's because of somebody else. Whenever your ego's pumped up and you're full of all kinds of willpower, it's somebody else. And you think it's you. So you make decisions on it. Like me with my undefined emotional system. When I was younger, I would have that emotional system pumped up, and the moment it would pump up, I would make a decision. I thought it was my emotions. This led to chaos. It had nothing to do with me. You know, what design is all about is to really understand the dichotomy that exists in each of us. This basic duality in each of us. What we can trust and where we're conditioned. The moment that you live out what you can trust is the moment that you're going to discover for the first time in your life that your life is okay. Because that's what you're here to do. The test in life is how you deal with all this potential conditioning. Most people just get absorbed in other people. They get absorbed in their children, they get absorbed in their lovers, they get absorbed in their colleagues. And they lose all sense of identification. So whenever you're looking at your own design and you're seeing all of these centers that are open, remember something. Two sides to it. You can be deeply conditioned there so that your whole life is lived out based on somebody else. If I did the charts of all of you, and I did the charts of all of your parents, and I did the charts of all the people that you're close with now, you will discover that the charts of your parents and the charts of the people you're close with now have all the same connections to you. You're still in the same conditioning. It's about time to wake up and recognize that, and to see the difference, to know. And the moment that you can understand where you're conditioned is the moment that you are free of it. Not the energy. When people have powerful emotions and they step inside of me and I take that emotional energy inside, there's nothing I can do about it. But I don't identify with it. I don't suffer. And when I've had enough, I just step away and I break the aura. And it's gone. Period. An aura is about twice the length of my arm going all the way around my body in every direction. You think about that. You think about where you live. Think about the room you sleep in. I tell partners not to sleep with their lovers. It's very simple. You spend one third of your life unconscious. Go to sleep in your own aura, wake up in your own aura. Otherwise you're never going to know who you are. You're never going to even have a chance to know who you are. Because you're never going to be who you are, ever. Simple things, simple things. The truth is always simple. All of us, all of us are always in a conditioning matrix. It means that you have to be very careful about the people that are around you. You have to recognize who's good for you and who isn't. You have to recognize that anybody in your life who is trying to change you is your enemy. Understand that. You cannot be changed. There's a gate here. Here's 15th gate. This is the gate of extremes. She's an extremist. And by extremist, what I mean is that she has extremes of energy. Sometimes she's busy, 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 busy. And sometimes she can't do anything. Now, when she can't do anything, the best thing for her to do is enjoy doing nothing. And when she's busy, 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 the best thing for her to do is enjoy that. 
And if somebody comes up to her while she's lying flat on her back and she can't do anything and says, hey, you know, you should really get up and do something, then you know that she's got the wrong person in her life. And if she's running around like mad and somebody comes up to her and says, hey, you know, you should really calm down, you know she's got the wrong person in her life. Don't allow anybody to change you. Don't allow anybody to change your basic nature. It means they have no respect for you. It means they do not love you. Human beings are forever getting themselves into relationships and then demanding that the other person change. It does not work that way. It will only lead to problems over and over and over again. You have to find people in your life that accept you for what you are. And if they're not there, then learn to wait. Don't chase after every aura that comes into you and wants to condition you into being what they expect you to be. That's how you were all raised. By the expectations of your parents. By the expectations of your teachers. By the expectations of the places where you work. Constant conditioning. And then you end up being the same way. You get up in the morning, you look in the mirror, and you decide you don't like it. You want to be uh, smarter, richer, faster, better looking. All those things that people think they deserve. Instead of just seeing that what you are is absolutely, absolutely perfect. And by the way, that's not mystical. That's just a fact. There's never been anything like any of you. Or like me. We're absolutely unique. We're part of the genetic totality. Each of us, each of us. Think about these neutrinos. When they're pouring through us, they don't stop. You can't stop a neutrino. They go pouring through us, they program us, and we program it. And then they fly out into space at near the speed of light. I've been on the Earth 46 years. In those 46 years, the information that has passed through me has gone out into the universe in every single direction at near the speed of light. I have touched so many stars in the sky with my energy. In fact, in fact, and recognize that each and every life is of value. For that reason, we are all adding our information to the totality. It's just about recognizing that what you are is already okay. It's my joke with people. You're already surrendered, but you just don't know it. You can look at all kinds of relationships all kinds of partnerships, all kinds of grouping together with people. In this particular case, what we have is that we have Indira, the daughter, in the red. We have her father in the black. And this chart over here, what this chart shows you is exactly how they come together in terms of what's fixed. Only the definition. The potentials aren't here. You can see on this side, you have all of these potentials here, but they're not a definition, so they don't get into this chart over here. The only thing that comes over here is the definition that is created, the permanent circuitry that is created, and this chart becomes the foundation of the relationship. And through this chart, you can see the nature of the relationship. If you'll remember, she did not have any of these three awareness systems defined. And the moment that she was in her father's aura, he defined the way her mind worked, he defined the way her instincts were, and together they opened up each other's emotional system. The moment that you step into somebody's aura, you make connections, and those connections are going to change you. This is somebody who was always being conditioned mentally by her father. She did not know that. Simply by being in his aura, she was defining her mental path. And when she left him, and she got married, she had her children, she came back to all of that. She ended up being his private secretary, spent a lot of time in this aura until he died. When human beings come together, there are four kinds of basic connections. The first kind of connection here is called dominance. Dominance is when one partner brings a whole definition. The best thing for dominance is love it or leave it. There's nothing you can do about it. Nothing you can do about it. If you have dominance in your life from your partner, first of all, it's what you're supposed to learn. But it's not pleasant. You have to deal with it. And there's nothing you can do. You can't change it. She could never change the way her father's mind works. 
She could never stop him from being an individual. This is the channel of individuality. This is from genius to freak. This is the unique insight of an individual. That was his way. Can't change that circuit. And the moment she's with him, she has to deal with that. And if she doesn't like it, she can't change it. She can leave it. But she can't change it. That's dominance. The second kind of connection is electromagnetic. An electromagnetic connection is when one partner opens up one end of a gate and the other partner opens up the other end of a gate. This meeting of each coming from the other side, this is the basic and fundamental dynamic in a relationship. This is love. This is also hate. It is attraction. It's also repulsion. It's the basic energy that fuels a relationship. In their particular case, this is in the channel of intimacy the most intimate of the social channels. These are people that have a deep, deep connection to each other, a dynamic intimacy between the two of them. The third kind of connection is called compromise. This is a channel of leadership. This channel of leadership is very interesting. Coming out of the self, you have the seventh gate. The seventh gate is about the role of the self in interaction. Whether someone's going to be a general or an authoritarian, or a democrat, or an anarchist, all kinds of possibilities. And the 31 gate at the top in the throat center so that it can be expressed, this 31 is the gate of influence. And when the role and the influence come together, you have the channel of leadership. Now, you can see in this case that the daughter has the whole channel. The father only has the beginning of it. He needed her in his life. And the role that she brought, because he did not have the role, he had the potential for influence, but he did not know what role to play, she brought the role, and she brought the role of the Democrat. <coughs> so it started off as the world's largest democracy. It still is. The last kind of connection is called companionship. And you can see in this black and red coding, the companionship is when both partners open up a whole channel together. This is real friendship. This is the basis of a deep partnership and companionship between people because they both have the same path, they both have the same energy and potential to deal with the same experience. This channel happens to be the channel of succeeding where other people fail. It's something that they shared together. Was this ability to be persistent, to stay with things, to be determined, and to be able to succeed to discover what they need to discover to succeed. These four kinds of relationships condition our meeting with other people. The moment that you have the foundation is the moment that you can go over to this side and you can find all the smoking volcanoes. Because you see, this is never static. This is the foundation of the relationship. But the relationship changes in time it changes when people come into the light. Let's take an example here. In the middle, this channel 2838, this is the channel of struggle. This is the channel of stubbornness. This 38th gate at the bottom is the gate of the fighter. The gate at the top, the 28th gate, this is the gate of the game player. The gate of the risk taker. And the moment that the game playing gate is opened up, then the fight gets serious and the struggle begins. Imagine for a moment it's not father and daughter. Imagine for a moment it's two people that have met each other and they're very attracted to each other and they get into a relationship together. And then all of a sudden a planet comes along like Jupiter that's in this 28th gate right now. A planet comes along and opens up this gate. And the moment the definition is connected it becomes part of the relationship. And that definition is struggle. And all of a sudden, they're fighting. They're fighting with each other. They're fighting with others. She looks at him and says, I didn't know you were like that. Suddenly, life is very hard for them. And they end the relationship. Just the transit. Just the transit. You know, this relationship, everything is connected together. This is very nice. They can communicate with each other. Every once in a while, not just every once in a while, a lot of the times you have relationships that are split. 
that have two areas of definition that are not connected to each other. And these people can come together on a transit that makes the bridge. It's happened so many times. You meet somebody, feels terrific. By the time the problems start, the woman's pregnant. They have the child. Child comes into the world, brings exactly the right aura to hook it all up again. And they all stay together as the child grows up. The parents, when they have problems, communicate through the child to each other. By the time the child's 17 or 18 or whatever age, when it finally leaves home, the parents go back to their split definition and they get divorced. And this is a movie that's been played over and over and over and over and over and over again. The reality is it could be just a planet like the little boy with Pluto opening up his talent. All of a sudden things can be wonderful and then one morning comes along and they're gone and what human beings do will then be their catalog of reasons. It's because of this or because of that or because of this or because of that and they do not know, you do not know. It's just a mechanic. The moment that you recognize that is the moment that you can really be awake. Awake. It's very different than being asleep. To be awake is just to experience your life. And it's to experience your life without seeing that there's anything wrong with it. There is not. There is not. It is what it is. To recognize the influence that people have over you. To recognize your own conditioning. To understand in those moments that you're confused about what's going on in your life, there are answers that you can find. As long as you understand your own nature, as long as you understand your own design, then you can understand how you're affected by everything else around you. No choice is my favorite sign. You know, one of the one of the the trials and the specialties of this kind of work is going around and I travel all over the place, letting people know that there's a way to understand how these things work. No choice is real. That is, it's real at the physics level, it's real at the atomic level, it's real at the biological level. Everything that you think and say and do is initiated in the deep gray areas of your brain one half second before you're aware of it. Think about that. Everything that you think and say and do, everything that you think and say and do is initiated in the deep gray areas of the brain a minimum of a half second before you're aware of it. We do not make any choices. We live out our lives. Life is something that happens to us. Now, as I told you, this is not about believing. There's been too much believing. The age of believing is over. We live in an age where it's necessary to have the facts. The reality is that I would never do such a silly job, because it's a silly job. I would never do such a silly job unless it was actually the facts. It's logical. It works over and over and over again. And this is the whole thing. It's something that you have to discover for yourself. It's not something that you discover through me. It's something you discover yourself. The moment you know your own design, you can find out the truth for yourself. And you can see that the moment that you recognize that is the moment that you're really free from the condition because it's the moment that you can recognize it. You begin your process of separating from the conditioning in your life that's negative. I'm going to be here in Munich until Saturday. Uh, we're going to, uh, Sunday, we're going to be giving a workshop here on uh, Saturday and Sunday and I'm available during the course of this week uh, for the time that I have left here to do individual readings. You know, to have your own individual analysis done. This is the easiest way and the quickest way to recognize that uh, this can really tell you who you are and it can really give you an enormous amount of protection in your process. It's also a wonderful education and opens up a whole new way of understanding your own nature and opens up a way for you to really begin to see not only where you've been conditioned in your life, but a way to see how you can step out of that conditioning, how you can live out the life that's really here for you. Anyway, I want to thank you for being here tonight. It was nice that you were here.